Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So, that man on your screen, his name is Oliver Mullins. Oliver Mullins, he was 46 years old. He is from the parish of St. Catherine. He is a past student of the St. Diego High School. Now, at the age of 27, Oliver Mullins, he joined the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He was married and he was the father of a son. Persons who knew Oliver Mullins, they described him as being a compassionate and kind person. But on the night of Thursday, October 22, 2022, about some minutes to 11 o'clock, Corporal Mullins, he was among a team of police officers. They were on duty in the West Kingston police area when they responded to calls from residents in the Trenchtown area that hoodlums were firing shots in the area. The team of police officers, when they responded, they were fired on by the hoodlums. They managed to return the fire. Now, when the shooting subsided, it was realized that Corporal Mullins, he was shot. He died as a result. One of the hoodlums was also shot and died too. Now, Corporal Mullins, he was killed in the line of duty. Usually, when a police officer is killed in the line of duty, that police officer is given full police honors at his or her funeral. Well, Corporal Mullins, he was buried yesterday, Sunday, November 27, 2022, at the Sydenham Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Catherine. And after the funeral, a lot of persons who attended and who did not attend, both police and civilians, they were left fuming. This is because Corporal Mullins, who was killed in the line of duty, he was not given the traditional 21-gun salute. I'm going to read a letter that was sent to members of the JCF by the Commissioner of Police late yesterday evening. It is on your screen. It says, Dear all staff, Today, we paid our last respects to our fallen member, Corporal Oliver Mullins, who, based on the circumstances of his death, was entitled to full police honors. Consistent with the official funeral policy and procedures for sworn and separated members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Corporal Mullins would be afforded 1. Coffin draped in Jamaican flag 2. Police hearse 3. Uniformed Paul Bearers 4. Vigil Party 5. Hannah Guard 6. Escorts 7. Buglers and Trumpets 8. Ushers 9. Force Wreaths 10. Wreaths Orderlies 11. JCF Choir 12. Firing Party 13. Tribute from the Commission of Police and 14. Uniformed Mourners all these courtesies were extended to him with the exception of the firing of volleys, which would have been executed by the firing party, but who was absent before departing the burial site. An investigation was ordered into the absence of the firing party and other activities that were below the expected standards. As a member of the JCF who performed Honorably, he was deserving of all our best efforts in performance of his last rites. Unfortunately, we let him, his family, and the JCF down. This failure to adequately execute the standards and procedures as outlined in force policy will not be tolerated. And once the full report is received, swift corrective measures will be taken you know <laughs> commissioner i really have a problem with that word corrective corrective what does that mean it cannot be corrected again what you're going to call back the family and call back everybody and have a 21 gun salute it cannot be corrected again commissioner 
what we are expecting is swift take out the corrective swift actions will be taken and this was signed by major general anthony anderson the commissioner of police so someone dropped the ball let's wait and see how this one is gonna play out also at the funeral service the chairman of the police federation corporal rowan james he also spoke i implore you to listen to what the union head for the rank and file policemen and women had to say listen to this and listen carefully protocols have already been established i will adapt same in the interest of time as we pause today to acknowledge the come of death and to roll back the curtains to remember our colleague number 11670 constable oliver mullins it is with humility that i stand here and to say to the family our sincere condolences on behalf of the rank and file cohort and to express gratitude to the family for loaning him to a nation where ingratitude reigns supreme and there is absolutely no acknowledgement for the autonomy vested to the calling when we assume the roles and responsibilities of policing this country where lawlessness runs unabated. I stand here today on a number of premises to remind the citizenry of Jamaica that the police federation will not be muzzled. Cannot be muzzled and will not be intimidated. When we spoke in confidence and in privacy about welfare and well-being, it is because we understand the reality that if you don't take care of the human resources, then naturally those who rely on the services will feel the pinch. I say this against the backdrop that notwithstanding the police federation continues to beseech our employer, the government, for resources and proper remuneration, there continued to be a piecemeal approach to national security. Why do I say this? MOCA formed proper remuneration. Yet still, the police rank and file who police the largest aspect of our citizenry, welfare continues to be ignored. The bag juice approach that is being taken and expecting a champagne residual effect, it cannot happen like that. When the police federation speaks of accountability, we know what we are speaking about. Our roles and responsibility entails investigation, unearthing intelligence, and ensuring that it is garnered into evidential values. So those who believe that they can send threat to the police federation about lawsuit, about their ineptness, incompetence, they can underscore today that we know what we are talking about because those funds that continues to be returned to central treasury coffers from the appropriation in aid proceeds. We know that it is happening, but yet still, our colleague, Constable Oliver Mullins, could have been alive today if the government of Jamaica had taken appropriate action to resource us. One. They know the, that the environs have changed. They know that criminal elements have ramped up their artilleries. But guess what? They continue to produce police officers and send us out, not even with the basic amenities, uniform, ballistic vests, ballistic shields. Come on, Jamaica. Come on, Jamaica. 
when our employer creates the mayhem, they should be held accountable. There is absolutely no space for any state of emergency because they know what they are doing when they are tying our hands, depriving us of the resources from police in this country. So when I'm at my office, treating with the welfare, encouraging the membership to hold strain and underpinning that the citizens of this country matters most, and we matters too, to see persons who are accountable writing to me seeking public apology or retraction or else legal action back up. This chairman is not going to step down and to give any account to anybody who believes that they are delinquent in their roles and responsibility and expect me to bow to them. No way. I'd rather to die on yonder gallows for the people of Jamaica and the men and women that I serve. Colleagues, Oliver Mullins served this country with pride, humility, and compassion. He touched lives. All we are simply saying to our employer, the government, provide us with the resources that we can stir response to duties call. Enough is enough. Every time we are in meetings, we are promised. We are promised monument and that it would be unveiled in the 60th year of our jubilee. Where it is, broken promises. We are a promise that we will be properly remunerated. But yes, still, we have our Minister of Finance behaving as if we are mendicants at the table. It will not happen under my watch. We are promised that we will have facilities, but yet still there is not a holistic approach being taken to ensure that the resources are pumped into national security. And then we stand at podiums crying and behaving as if we don't know what we are doing. Enough is enough. We have been promised facilities, but yet still we have the incompetences and the ineptness where environmental impact assessment continues to delay projects that we are supposed to get facilities and aesthetics commensurate with the service, the risk associated with the profession, and it continues to be delayed, and nobody is held accountable. Enough is enough. <laughs> Colleagues, Jamaica, Jamaicans, those in viewership, the hypocrisy that continues, it's unabated. The private sector organization, the mecca of this country, must underscore and seek to hold those who are elected accountable. I don't play politics. I play for the lives and the well-being of our citizens and our colleagues. And it is time we underscore the importance of Jamaica Vision 2030. We cannot achieve same without the investment. Lip service, pretty talk, won't cut it. I am not going to be one that is going to be promised any cabinet secretary post to hold down the truth and let the lies continue to be pervasive in our society. That won't happen under my watch. So colleagues, family, Alexis, Oliver, you will not be alone in this. You have several fathers and mothers within the constabulary force. We are going to stand for you, with you, in the time of adversity. The Federation will now become a part of you. That's our solemn commitment to you. And for those who continue to point finger and to play blame game, let me say this. I reminded my colleagues at our central conferences that the PNP 
means police not promoted. And JLP means justice left police. So today, all I'm simply saying to you, colleagues, Jamaica must ensure that we hold those who we elect accountable and not to listen to lip service and pretty speeches. Put the resources of our tax dollar to work that we can at least see our children benefiting once and for all. My colleague, Oliver Mullins, you may have been cut short in your sojourn in service to the citizens of this country, but we acknowledge you even in death. And may your life continue to let light perpetually shine on you. And one day we'll meet where all will be equal at the foot of the cross. Walk with my brother. Blessed love, everybody.